come along with me on what has become a very frustrating service call. We have a breaker that's on the roof that has been tripping uh, for the last several months. I finally replaced it last week because we noticed that, oh, all of a sudden it's now black and charred, like no longer a good breaker. Last time I was here, I was gonna swap the breaker around with another one, see if it was the wires, the load, whatever but the breaker was blackened and so I figured that's, I mean, either way, it's a bad breaker. Thought that would fix it, but here we are again. So we're gonna try to figure out what in the world is going on. Really, I did forget my sunglasses today. Yes, dang, dang for sure I did. So this is a great little ballast mount, flat roof out here. I don't know what kind of solar panels they are. Doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. We got SMA inverters, probably Dash 41s. I love these core ones because they're just, I just like them, you know? You just set them on the roof, hook them up, you can replace parts out of them. I just like them, you know? One of the cool things I think about this installation is all of the combiner stuff is actually right up here on the roof. The main I flipped off earlier is the main for this entire combiner panel, so I just need to check that it's dead and, you know, we're good to go. Judging from the inverters though, they sure don't have voltage. Well, here we are again. I don't love that there's some discoloration in there. Jeez, I hope it didn't fry another breaker. So honestly, first things first, we're gonna check this wireway right here because this is where all of the all of the AC loads go, especially for that one inverter that keeps tripping in here. Now, let's see if it Oh come on, really? That's really not good, dude. So very likely what happened here was one of these two lugs was not well tightened. And when you don't have a tight connection, it's gonna start melting, it's gonna start heating up, and eventually you hit a short. And before all the electricians start coming for me in the comments, this was, I mean, we checked this box beforehand. This, we, we've, I've been back to check this thing probably twice. Now, if I had checked it the, before I replaced the breaker, Maybe I would have seen something. I probably would have seen something if I checked this box, but like at that point we'd already checked the box twice, figured it was fine, figured it was just a bad breaker, right? And when I replaced the breaker and turned it on, it didn't trip immediately. Like it stayed on, it was fine. The inverter started producing and then later it tripped again. So at this point, I'm pretty sure if I turned the breaker on, it'd be a dead short, but that wasn't the case previously. And I think we probably have a couple others here that also are not well torqued and need to be torqued again, because this one is getting a lot of discoloration in it. Like this one's fine. You can see the color difference. This one's a lot more clear. This one's got a lot more brown to it. So I can probably still turn most of this array back on. I just need to double check all the freaking lugs again. Gee, gee. Well, good news, hey. it's not welded to the box, but you definitely see that it arced to the box in multiple different ways. If I had to guess, this one is probably the one that wasn't tied down. Honestly, either of them could have been because they're not smashing the conductors a whole lot. Maybe both, who knows? I'm so grateful to whoever decided to put electrical tape all over everything. So it looks like we got, oh man, oh wow, that one's hot. That one is temperature wise very hot. So we've definitely got one, two, three, four, Five, yeah, five lugs to replace over here. I'm gonna need to come around over here and check this wire cabinet too, just to, just to make sure, you know? Oh, well, that's easy. Now I gotta put you back on. But at least those are straight runs all the way to their inverters over there. I did bring along my insulation tester because I thought I'd get to play with it today, but no, it decided to be easy for me. Another thing we got to keep in consideration is how did the wires fare in here when this thing was decided to go AWOL? But these wires seem to be fine. They're just dirty, just ashy. And like I can deal with ashy wire, that's fine. As long as the insulation's in good shape, which it appears to be back there. We just need to replace some connectors and we're back up to functioning. Oh, that's fun. Look at that in there. This one was one that didn't die yet, but you can see the lugs through the plugs. Plug lugs. That's stupid. So what I say, one, two, and six. And three. One, two, three, and six. So one, two's already off. One, two, three, and six. We'll stuff everything back in there, come back another day, and swap all those lugs. Whee! All right. 
right, well, we're back. It's about two, three days later. I've got some lugs. I'm gonna get some tools. We'll get up on that roof and uh, get those wires all fixed up and get everything running for, for real now. Let's hope. Now, I shouldn't need to open this up, turn this off and lock it out because up there we have our combiner box and uh, I'll be right next to it. So then there's nobody up there. So that's gonna be okay. I'm gonna honestly just turn them all off because we're all working in the same area and I just don't wanna risk it. Bye. Now, before I get too far here, I am gonna absolutely make sure that uh, this is all dead. No, oh, no, we got a little bit of phantom voltage, but that's like three or four volts. Enough to know that the meter's working, but also enough to know that it's dead. So we got one, two, three, four, five lugs. The rest of them seem okay. I did get six lugs just in case, but I think we'll be fine with this. Isn't that cool? So gross. Pick. Oh, man, that one's tight. That one's not so much tight. That one's just sort of melted. I think the big one here was at fault. Now let's see how much good aluminum we actually have in here. It actually doesn't look bad. Typically when you get something this badly burnt, it ends up frying the conductor enough that you gotta cut it back a good ways. But I wonder if this hit the can fast enough so that it didn't really have time to do that. Yeah, cause like if the conductor itself was really badly burnt, you'd also be having a really hard time peeling this off of there. So I'm pretty confident that we don't even need to cut these back very far. That, yeah, well, you know what? Here's the thing. <clears throat> this happens to be 350 and this is only good up to 250. I did suspect that coming in, but I also suspected that there would be ones over here that are 250 that have 350 lugs on them. So we're gonna swap a couple of these over and use these for the smaller ones because the supply house didn't have 350s today. Oh no. That one was very loose. That one just turned. Yeah, we're gonna need to check uh, literally all of these for torque. That one too. Look at that. I mean, I know I got it with the wrench a little bit, but I, I shouldn't be able to, that's yikes. That's a yikes for me, dog. Now, usually for 3.8, they go like 375, which is like, I don't know, it's like 27 or something. Nah, 31. 31 foot-pounds, which honestly, 375 for these suckers is nigh on impossible because you don't have anything to hold it against. Yep, there we go. Make sure all of our stuff is solid in there. Those are tight. And we're gonna throw this back in there. Boom, bam, baby. Before I get too much farther here, I'm gonna check a bunch more of these just to make sure they're literally tightened at all. Okay, if you are an electrician out there and you are by default wrapping your Polaris lugs in electrical tape, don't do that. It makes everything so much more messy and it doesn't usually even do the job. Either everything's positioned in a way where your plugs are not gonna fall out or they're gonna fall out anyway because you have them crammed in there so hard that the tape's gonna fall off anyway and the, they'll pop out. But like these things, they're so far in there. Don't wrap them in tape, please. It's obnoxious. Ah, this one's still got so much to do on it. Look at that. Look at how much I'm getting out of that. Look at all of that. No wonder a couple of these burned. And like, that's not just loosening up from over time. Like you don't usually want to retorque already made connections because the wire in there has settled just a little bit. And if you keep torquing it like every three months, six months, eventually you're going to go straight through that wire and you're going to have a fire anyway. But in this situation, we're only doing it once, so it's fine. Now, these are fun. If you look at these, I'm starting to maybe understand why they felt like they had to tape these on. Maybe it's because they didn't freaking tighten them. Oh, that is, I cannot tell you how easy that was to tighten just right then. Wow. And look at that, once it's torqued, the whole plug actually fits in there. It's not gonna actually come out. That one was a little bit better. Okay, I stand corrected a little bit. This does kinda 
I could see this slipping out a little bit easier. I'm still not gonna tape it because it should stay in just fine, but certainly they'll stay in much easier than they were before when they weren't tight. See how easy I'm turning that with my hand? I mean, I guess I can keep repeating this over and over or I could just cut straight to a time lapse and then we're done. We got everything looking pretty nice now. Made sure everything was tight. Went through and tightened all these existing ones that aren't melted. Didn't run into any surprises, so I still have one left over there, which is nice. And these are all safely tucked away from the top. There's nothing touching the top. There's one kind of touching the bottom. It doesn't really matter. You know, they're insulated for a reason. And a little wood block to keep everything back, as you do. We'll close this up, turn everything back on up there, and then, you know, clean up, and we should be done for the day. Hey, fella. I really appreciate you watching. I love showing people the process of troubleshooting and maintaining solar systems or looking at disasters and seeing what you do about them in this case. I've historically done a lot of this stuff on TikTok, but please feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, because I'm planning to do more of this. And with that, Solar Boy says that is done and sun.